Hi, welcome back. Today's episode is all about breaking, stopping, not destroying. I feel like that's an important distinction since there's a lot more breaking on this channel than there's breaking. So maybe it's time to take a break and do some breaks. Let's go. This has definitely been one of the less straightforward jobs I've done on this project. I wanted to get them sandblasted and cleaned from all the rust before I replaced the new seals because sandblasting isn't exactly good for rubber and I didn't want to fill them with sand as well. That's why I wanted to keep the seals. I did manage to clean most of the rust with the sandblasting and I did some with the wire brush, angle grinder and drill as well. After that I treated them with the rust converter. And this gave them the nice black finish you're seeing right now. The next step is to get them painted and replace all the seals. But before I paint them I want to get the pistons moving nice and easy because I feel like this one is a little bit stuck. And I don't want to ruin the fresh paint job trying to get it unstuck. With both pistons moving freely, I'm going to do some cleaning and I'm going to prep them for paint. For this job, I bought some high temperature paint. Uh, it's guaranteed to last up to 300 degrees. I don't plan on running these bricks red hot, so I think 300 degrees is plenty. The paint is pretty much dry now, it looks like we achieved good coverage. For the curing process I was thinking of barging at home and shoving them in the oven, but it says that toxic fumes will be emitted during the curing. So I decided that's not a good idea because I like where I live and I want to keep living there. So I came up with my own solution using my heat gun and this box which is clearly fire resistant. I also stole the turkey thermometer to monitor the temperature very precisely. A few moments later a little longer than a few minutes later Alright, so it's been a long while, we're going down from 160 degrees, let's see the final result. I think they're looking pretty well. Alright, all that's left now is to let them cool down and we're going to proceed with replacing all the rubbers. Mr. and Mrs. Brake Caliper are looking good as new, they're fresh as ever, they've cooled down from their heat argument earlier, and now it's time to refresh them on the inside. With the pistons popped, we're gonna let Mr. Brake Caliper take a break over here, put them aside, and we're gonna focus on Mrs. Brake Caliper because lady is first. 
this particular piston you can see it's been treated before I'm guessing these rubbers have been replaced before uh, there's some pitting over here which somebody either scrubbed with sandpaper or something like that but normally if your piston is in good health and there's no pitting over here and you haven't cut it to get it unstuck you can just keep it as long as the surface is good and clean I bought this replacement kit from Autofran which came with a new piston a new piston boot, new main seal, a couple of variations of the bleed nipple, two boots for the sliders, a cap for the bleed nipple and some assembly loop. So let's change my gloves and put this back together. There's still some gunk inside so I'm gonna go get that cleaned with the compressed air. Now I'm going to take out the main seal, which is square, it's not an o-ring. This is what it looks like. And it's very important to clean both the channel for the main seal and the one for the boot really well. So that's what we're going to do now, using this two as best as I can. Now we throw away the old main seal and we put in the new one. Perfect. Now the piston with some assembly loop. Installing the boot can be a bit tricky. My strategy is to slide it on the piston and get it set in the groove at the same time. Like this. And now get the piston straight slide it inside and it sits itself on the piston and that's done perfect set this one aside flip the rag get a new rag and here comes Mr. Brake Caliper old piston old seal in this case, the piston is in good condition, so normally I would keep it, but I have the spare anyways. Might as well use it. Get rid of the old seal. This one has much cleaner grooves than the other one. Considering the other one was stuck, I can see why. That's good. New main seal. There it goes. New piston with new rubber. Let's use what's what we have left from the old assembly loop. Make sure it's well seated all around. Perfect. Now for the caliper supports, we take this out, slide the rubber off, give it some good cleaning. Mm. 
looking pretty good. And the other one. By the way, it's always a good idea to check if these pins are straight. You can do this by rolling them. If they don't roll smoothly, they're bent and you should replace them. That might be the reason your caliper is seized. These are good. So we can proceed normally. And for these pins, you need a special loop, which is this Brems cylinder paste. And it goes in the holes or on the pins. First, let's put some new rubbers on. That's one. And that's two. Now some Bremsen cylinder paste. And press the rubbers in. Both are moving freely. Now the other one. Ooh, nice. Perfect. Let's wipe out the excess loop. And we're done. I was cleaning the tiny little tubes that go to the brake calipers on these brackets. And I noticed this one was clogged. So I pulled this out of it, which looks like a matchstick. I don't know how that got inside. Weird. Now before we put the brake calipers on, it would be nice to replace the brake hoses, which I've had conveniently clamped for more than a week now. For that we need to undo this very very rusty nut which looks like it's never been undone before. Let's see what we can do. I strongly recommend using flared wrenches for this job because otherwise you have a very very big chance of rounding it off. I don't have a choice then, I'm gonna have to get it the hard way out. Now with a little bit of luck, it's gonna come undone with the CD thingy. Alright, so while that's dripping over there, and that's the C section we need to undo. While I'm at it, might as well undo this side if I have to fix them, fix both at the same time. quick trip to the local store where the guys produce brake lines and my fr frustration with this job has been lowered significantly. 
Normally from the factory the brake lines would be installed before the suspension and the cables and the cooling pipes and everything else which is going to be a bit of a trouble when I'm installing these because everything else is in place already but I have 2-3 centimeters on this one extra length and about 5 on this one so that's some leeway to work with First I started with the easiest, easier one because the shorter it is the less you can get wrong it was a bit challenging after about half an hour of struggling, this one turned out rather okay. I'm not sure that the long one is gonna fit half as nice as this one, but we'll see. For the short one, I could follow the shape of the old one a little bit, because I hadn't damaged it that much. But this one I bent in half to take it to the store. So it's gonna be a bit harder. To my surprise, the long one was actually easier to do with the brake lines back in place it's time to put back the caliper which is probably the easiest part of all this And I personally like to put some copper grease on the support here. Good thing I didn't tighten the small brake line because I forgot to put spring springs. Thank you very much for sticking to the end. Everything in the front is brand spanking new and torque to spec, apart from the discs and the wheel bearings, but I think those are in good condition. Next episode, we're gonna be moving towards the back for the rear control arms and the rear brakes. When we're done with that, we can bleed each corner and put the wheels back so the bus can roll again. But all that's gonna happen in the next episode. Again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, Drop a like, ask me something in the comments and consider subscribing. Bye!